Tonight is an exciting night uh, because I am going to be talking about men's suiting. So second behind fur, my favorite topic is men's suits. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, three things that you should keep in mind when you are purchasing a suit. So first thing, of course, is the fit right the second thing is how it feels right what 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 does that fabric feel like on your body um and then the third thing would be how the suit is made and this part people don't necessarily consider especially if you're going to like macy's or something like that and you're getting a suit so i'm going to talk about you know how a suit fits you, how it feels on you, how it's made. I'm going to talk about the difference between off the rack, made to measure, and bespoke. I'm also going to talk about the difference in suit and fabrics, right? Uh, because not every fabric is for every season. So I'm going to talk a little bit about fabrics. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk about something that we all should know in terms of buying a suit, which is that super number. What is that super number? What does that mean? Super 100, super 140s, uh, super 120s, super 130s. Um, I'm also going to show some suits. So it's a little bit of show and tell tonight, which is always good. It's, it, and, it's, and it's difficult to do with live broadcasts because one, on, on Facebook, I could be able to you know, share my screen and, and show you images and things like that. But on Instagram, I can't. And I have to show my Instagram people some love. So tonight, I printed out some things. We're going to do a little makeshift, make sure that I can, you know, get across the concepts and things like that with it. On, uh, on Facebook, I do have a poll. And for some reason, it's not coming up. But what I want you to do is the question that I have for everybody, and you could just write yes or no into the chat, is do you currently own a custom suit? So Instagram, the guys, gals that's on, do you currently own a custom suit? Just type in yes or no. Facebook, do you currently own a custom suit? Type in yes or no into the chat. Who else is in here? Who else is in here? Sean? Miss Ella, how you doing? D. Barrett, Deborah, Courtney, Conrad, Arthur, BJ, French Hayes, Nathaniel, Hassani, Vincent. Yes, yes, Elite Gent. Yes, yes, Kales 307. No, okay. All right, so we're going to learn about the differences between, again, like I said, off the rack, made to measure, um, as well as uh, bespoke suits. I'm going to show you some of my suits, many that you've seen before, some that you haven't. Um, so I'm going to show some suits. I'm going to show some materials. So some of you know this, some of you don't, right? But I am working on, I've mentioned this in previous lives, but I'm working on my suit collection this year, which is a big deal for me. I've loved suits for a very long time. And I've been working behind the scenes to get exactly what I want my suits to look like, how I want people to feel when they wear the suits, how I want them to fit, all of those things. So I'll give you a little bit special treat for you. I'll give you a little bit of insight into my thought process with that, how I'm thinking about it, what types of materials I'm looking at and things like that. All right, let's see. The coats with the fur on the... <laughs> We will not be talking about the coats on the on with the fur on the collar tonight. But Brian Keith, if you are interested, send me a DM and we can get your order started. Uh, I love the co color combination. Thank you, Timothy. All right. So again, as I mentioned, three most important things or three things that I initially think about when I am um, going to purchase a suit or have a suit made. All right, so one, how it fits, how it feels, and how it's made. So what I want to do is get right into Busy B, what's going on? Uh, what I want to do is get right into how 
suits are made, right? And what you should look for if you are going to uh, purchase a suit from, you know, a Macy's or a men's warehouse or wherever it is that you, you're you going to uh, purchase a suit from. So we're going to be talking about three types of suits. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the way that suit jackets are made, right? So first, I'm going to talk about what a fuse suit is. So if you know what a fuse suit is, just type yes in, in, in the chat. I know what a fuse suit is. Um, a fuse suit. So what a fuse suit is, think about a suit that probably looks cheap uh, and looks uh, stiff, right? So if you look, if you see this suit, you see this suit like it moves. The lapels, everything kind of like moves and it like fits and it's like not necessarily stiff, right? So this is not a fuse suit, but a fuse suit is, um, it has a fusible like interlining that is glued to in, in between like the lining of, of the suit and the outer material of the suit um, to both the panels and lapels. So that's why with a fuse suit, it's kind of like really, really, really stiff, right? And, and companies fuse suits because that's the cheapest way to make a suit, a mass produce a suit. You just glue in the fusible uh, material and boom, it has a shape. But a lot of times with that, the shape doesn't necessarily match your body, right? So, so you know, I don't, I don't want to call out really re retailers that make few suits, but you know a few suit when you see it. It does not fall nicely on your body. It is very stiff. The lapels are very stiff. This piece right here is very stiff. It usually will, depending on if you try to get it to have like a tailored, you know, fit on your body, it's gonna bunch up like this and and, and just be be stiff. So that is a few suit. And I have, I was like, I need to kind of drive these concepts home. So what I did was I printed out, right? what 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 I'm talking about what what it really means to have a fuse suit so you see all of this yellow here that is the fusible material that they glue to the outside part of the coat all right so this is a fuse suit again the advantages of a fuse suit is that it's relatively inexpensive um the the biggest disadvantage to me is the way that it will fit your body, all right? It, it won't lay nicely on your body. And most important, one of the most important things with a suit is that it lays on your body nicely. So a fuse suit, so again, fusible fabric is glued, right? Glued to the, uh, the outer material of the suit. So it sits between the outer material and the lining, and it is not uh, it's not the best. So if you have a little bit more money to spend, all right, my suggestion is, you know, the in-between, right? And, and this is what a lot of suits are made out of, half canvas, right? So with the, with the half canvas, all right, let's see if we can, it made my face much darker, but I hope everyone could see the picture. Now, with a half canvas suit, the fusing is still there, but the half canvas, right, it goes from the shoulder to like below the chest. And what this canvassing material allows the suit to do is to lay nicer on your body, right? So if it is, uh, this canvassing piece right here is on the lapel as well as the body up to about here. 
and that allows this piece, the lapel, to lay nicely, as well as the suit to lay nicely on your body here. So that is the half canvas. And again, most suits are, you know, made out of either fused, right, where you can tell, so it's really, really stiff, um, and the lapels are really stiff, or half canvas, where it's baby stiff, <laughs> but still still uh, can start to lay nicely on, on your body. And then it is the best. What is the best? So we got the fused, we got half canvas. What's the best? What's the best? I, I know I got my suit, some suit guys in here. Franklin, I, saw, I see you in here. I see you in here. What's the best? What's the best? Okay, now, uh, so WM Connor, how can you tell if the suit had those parts? That is a good question. The question is, what is the best kind of suit construction that you can have? Um, how can you tell? Definitely with a fused suit, you can tell. If the suit is gonna look cheaper and it's not gonna quite fit your body quite right. It's gonna be much stiffer in this the chest area um, as well as the, the lapel is not gonna lay right. Now, um, how can you tell if it's actually, how can you tell? So I was doing some research, right? And the methods of being able to tell if your suit is half canvas, full canvas, fused, uh, the easiest way, which is also the most difficult way, is to cut the suit open, right? So you don't want to cut the suit open. Um, the other way that they suggested was pinching uh, right above the button to see if you can feel the different layers um, there, right? So if it was a half canvas, can you feel the canvas in between the outer suit material in the lining and how hard or soft it is. So short answer is there's no guaranteed way to tell other than cutting open the suit. And, and clearly you're not gonna wanna cut open the suit. So um, now the best suit to get that is going to lay on your body so nicely and just make you look like the man, right? Or, or woman, right, is a full canvas suit, right? So a full canvas is going to cover from here, right? It's going to cover the lapel all the way down to the bottom of the jacket, right? So here is the illustration, right? This is this blue piece right here is backwards. So I'm like, this is the canvas right here, this blue piece. I'm sorry, everything is like reverse on my fingers, but this is this is the canvas. So as you can see, uh, the canvas covers most of uh, the suit, right? The lapel and the body. Now, the advantage to having a full canvas suit is that over time, the suit conforms to your body, right? So the more that the suit ages and the more that you wear it, it actually will take the form of your body. And I know some people are probably thinking, oh, I don't know if I wanted to actually take the form of my body, but that is when the suit just lays on your body so nice and you look so rich and you look so dapper. And over time, you look more and more dapper because this full canvas uh, just kind of conforms to your body. Um, and canvas can be made out of uh, horse hair, uh, camel hair, mi mixed hair products um, that that allow it to uh, to you know lay the way that 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 it lays. So full canvas suit is 
the best suit, but of course, full canvas is the most expensive um, type of suit that you you know can 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 get made. All right, so let me just take a quick a quick little peek and see. Wow, there's a lot of people. Hey, 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 hey. Um, okay, so that's fuse suit. So fuse suit again, the fusible material just glued right onto this material so it creates it makes it really really stiff and you can usually tell a fuse suit um and then it's half canvas so it's that fuse material plus the canvas over you know the lapels as well as up to probably right around here so half of your you know half of your torso um that the piece of canvas that's put into you know in between the lining and the outer fabric of your suit allows the suit to lay nicer on your body and then the third is full canvas so canvas all the way from here the lapels all the way down uh the suit jacket that is the best that allows everything to just really really lay nicely and conform to your body to give you that super super dapper finish um look that that you're looking for um so again right most retailers is going to be either fused uh especially if the suit is is relatively inexpensive if you get a suit for a hundred dollars and it's not marked down to a hundred dollars like the price is a hundred dollars most likely it's a fused suit um and most likely uh you know in general retailers you're not gonna get a full canvas um suit now so let's talk a little bit about the difference between off the rack made to measure and bespoke right so off the rack sounds exactly you know what it sounds like which is you go to a macy's or something you pick up a suit all right and you can either wear it or get you know, get it altered some to um, your body. So everything comes in standard sizes, right? 38, 40, 42, 44. The pants come in, you know, 30, 32, 33, 34, 36, 38. Standard sizes, off the rack, the easiest. You just go, pick it up, put it on. Most likely it's not going to fit your body the right way. Um, but it's all made based off of general body um, types, all right? So even if you do get an off-the-rack suit, it makes sense to uh, hem the pants, all right? Take the jacket in if you can, um, make minor alterations to it so that it conforms to your body uh, much better, which leads me to uh, made-to-measure. So with made-to-measure, made-to-measure starts with... Uh, the you know the tailor or or the shop they start with patterns right so again right uh 42 jacket 44 jacket um and from that pattern they measure you all right and then they alter that pattern so that the suit will fit your body so you can pick uh certain certain uh Acromont to the suit, right? But like maybe the fabric, or they may have a few fabric options and things like that. But for the most part, you're not gonna have full creative control over your your suit with a made to measure uh, process. So some examples of made to measure are like a, like an Indochino or something like that, where you give them measurements they don't make the suit from scratch right they they take a pattern right that's close to the, the the measurement sizes that you gave them and then they create the suit uh for you or they adjust it based off of your um your body uh what is your standard size in in suits mine or just in general the smallest I've seen in suit sizes is, is a 34 jacket. Um, and then it can go up to, you know, big sizes, All right? So my chest is like a 35. I'm a slim, I'm a small guy. So a lot of times, 
you know, if I were to go to a retailer to get a suit, they probably don't have a jacket size that like would fit me. So I have no choice but to always get uh, it altered. So my my suit size. So this is uh, so this is so a couple things. So this is a Brooks Brothers suit. This was my first uh, double breasted suit. My first Brooks Brothers purchase. Um, a long time ago and I still wear it to this day and I still love it and it's very well made. I've had a lot of alterations done to it to get it to fit my, bro my body because old school Brooks Brothers is like a box, right? Very American style uh, suiting. So I've had a lot of uh, adjustments done to it over time to fit to my body. Even when I bought the, the pants were pleated I had the pleats taken out of, of the pants for this suit. Um, so we talked about off the rack, right? Made to measure. So again, right, the the shop, they take a pattern, right, that's close to your size, and then they alter it um, to, you know, your specific measurements. And then it is the most and the best Wow, 35, you look bigger on the video. I know, people always ask me, how tall am I? How big am I? Because in my images, I shoot them in a certain way so that I look bigger, right? That's like fashion photography. You shoot up so that the person looks t like taller. Um, but yes, my chest is only a, a, about a 35. Um, the best. So just a quick story before I go into this. So some people know this, some people don't, right? If you've been following me for some time, you kind of know my backstory. So before I started The Wealthy Guy, I worked in finance. And uh, while I was working in finance, I took an assignment in Hong Kong and I lived there for about three years. And during that time was really when I learned about men's suiting. Um, and I began to get all of my suits like bespoke or made, designed the entire thing, right? From, from, from scratch, right? So with bespoke, you know, tailoring, the tailor, you know, uses a fresh pattern based off of your body. So everything about the suit you can design, right? What the lapel will look like. Right, what the uh, will it have functioning buttons? And usually, a uh, bespoke suit will have functioning buttons. So, what I mean by that is if the buttons can actually, uh, if you can unbutton the buttons. Um, so, that is, did I pull out anywhere I have that? Yes, I did. So, just really quickly, so I'll show you. Um, so, this is one of the suits that I got made in Hong Kong, and the buttons. I can undo them. So that is functioning buttons. Um, so that is also how you can tell a high quality suit if if the buttons can uh, be, be unbuttoned. Um, so whoa, I lost my place. All right, okay, so uh, bespoke. You can design all of the aspects of the suit, right? Like what the lining will look like, right? Do you want a vest? Do you not want a vest, right? What, how the hem on the pants will be, like how it will lay. Will it be straight? Will it be slanted? To me, that is the most beautiful. And that is what I really fell in love with, um, with men's suit and being able to just design every aspect of my suit and then getting the suit and it's just, it's mine. It's mine. It's made for my body specifically and only no one else in the world will have this exact suit. And that is the beauty of bespoke. Um, but of course with bespoke, bespoke is the most, uh, is the most expensive. So I mentioned that I um, am working on my suit line and I have like all of my stuff here. I pulled everything out. So, you know, if you were going to get a bespoke suit made, right, you would go to 
your tailor, right? And they would show you a whole bunch of fabrics that you can get, you know, and you can feel the fabrics and you can decide on, you know, what, what, you know, the outer fabric will look like, and then you'll pick what the lining will look like of the suit, and you'll just pretty much pick all of the aspects of the suit, even down to, listen, I done pulled out everything for y'all, even down to what the buttons will look like in the thread. You see that? So I mentioned that I'm working on my suit line. So I've been combing through all of these books and all of these materials and all of these buttons and all of these threads and all of these things trying to figure out exactly what my suit um, will look like. So if you need a custom suit, come to me because I'm here and I have everything <laughs> that I need. Um, so that is the beauty of bespoke. You can truly make the suit your own. You can design the entire suit and it will be a one of a kind, essentially one of a kind made for you. Um, what else, what else? So let's talk about um, suit and fabrics. So most common fabric, especially for just kind of like a regular suit that you will like wear to the office is a worsted wool. Um, it, it's a, it's a mid-weight fabric and it's hard wearing, right? So you could, you know, run in it, you can drive in it, you can, you know, do a lot of things in it and, and it kind of, the material will, will hold, all right? Um, so that is the advantage of something like that. But as you go up in, in, in the S number, and I'll talk about the S number in a minute, the material gets softer and finer and easier to rip. Um, so the best, you know, material for like an office suit is a worsted wool, uh, you know, anywhere between a super, you know, 100 to like 120, 130. Um, also, other material that I wear, um, often my favorite suit is the tweed. I love this suit. And I would wear it every day if I could, but I can't. It is just beautiful. It is, to me, the just perfect winter suit um, for the, the the way the material feels, as well as the, the warmth. It keeps me warm. Um, it lays on my body nice, which is difficult because a uh, tweed is heavy and coarse. Um, but the way that I've like altered the suit has, ugh, it's just, it's good, it's good. I love it, I love it, I love it. So I, it, this is a tweed, but then also this is a tweed too. This is a different tweed. So this is a, I have, you know, a three piece tweed and the material is a little finer, whereas this one is a little grainier, but still it's, I just, I, I love it, I love it. Flannel, now flannel is soft, uh, but not very good for the office and not very good for hot weather. So I'm not going to talk much about a flannel suit. I would just say, don't wear it. Don't wear a flannel suit. Um, virgin wool is is the best, right? So it's soft and it's fine and it's ideal for men's suits. Um, and then merino wool. So again, it's soft and luxurious. Um and it stretches but maintains the shape. So my custom tuxedo um, with a mink lapel, this is actually a merino wool and it's a 120. So this is actually the leftover fabric from uh, when my tuxedo was created. So if you were to go to a fabric store or a tailor, they would show you the material. And at the bottom, usually it will tell you what the S number is. So if you can see, this is a Super 120s Australian Merino wool. Can you see that? Now, this is, I would say, a decent material, right? This material, it stretches kind of a little bit. So it gives a little, but it goes right back. So it keeps the shape. So this is ideal for 
you know, moving around every day um, because it keeps the shape um, and it stretches a little bit. Now, this particular one, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I don't love it. Um, but for functionality, it gets an A plus. Um, but it, this particular material actually uh, collects a lot of like dust or, 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 or lint. Things stick to it very easily. Um, so that is uh, what I don't like about that particular um, material. Um, so some of the, you know, uh, people that make the best or companies that make the best, you know, wool fabrics are, you know, uh, Laurel Piana, Xenia, um, Holland and Sherry. I even have um, some J. Crew suits that are made. The fabric is Vitali Barbaris Canonico, which is, <sighs> if you ever meet me in person and I have on this suit, just feel, just feel it. Don't feel me up. But just feel, just feel the material. It is just, it is just beautiful. Um, when I got all of my uh, my books that I'm like going through to determine, you know, like what my suits will like look like, my neighbors probably thought that I was like in here having sex because I started feeling the material, and I'm like, oh, oh my god, oh, this feels. I, I, I love, I love this. I love suits. I love feeling material. Like it, it is beautiful. Now, let me talk quickly about what this super 100s, 120s, 130s, 140s, 150s is all about, right? So it refers to the thickness of the fiber measured in microns. Right, but that is not the only thing that. So again, let me say it again. It refers to the thickness of the fiber measured in microns. So, for instance, in this particular book, these are all super one forties fabrics. But then it also will tell me the weight per micron of of each of of the materials. Now, do you really need to know the weight? Probably not, right? Unless you are really a suit connoisseur and, and, and you know what you want it to be. So the most expensive, so most suits are, again, between 100 and one in super 140s, right? The higher the number, the more fine the yarn is, the more, uh, more soft the uh, material is. Um, so once you get up to like 150s, all the way up to 180s, that is that is not a suit that you wear every day. That is a suit that you wear once or twice a year because the likelihood of something happening to the suit with everyday movement and things like that is 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 very likely. So again, right, super 150s up to super 180s. That type of suit, that is your boss suit where you just gonna stand there and nobody gonna, gonna touch you. You're not even gonna walk, right? But the beauty of that suit and the softness of the material is just is is amazing. But again, also the higher the super one, the the one the super number, the more expensive the material and the more expensive. The, the suit. Uh, what was the type of an office suit again? Worsted wool, worsted wool. Um, so other factors that will affect the finish, right? Because it's not just about the super 100 or 120 or 130. It's also um, the mill, right? Where was the fabric made, right? Italy, China, Asia, wh wh wherever. Um, and the type of weave, right? So that gives it a particular pattern. So for example, this is a Glen plaid pattern, all right? So a type of weave. So simplest, uh, in, in simple terms, right? So 
I have a lot of information in my head and I always try to think about it in like the easiest way to, to, to explain things, right? So um, a simple weave would be where the weave, uh, the, the over yarn and the under yarn are the same weight in the same length, right? So imagine, I should I should have probably printed out something for this, but the it, it's it's sewed under and over, but everything is the same weight, the same weight and the same length, and it gives you a strong, uh, it gives you like a strong uh, piece of material because everything is weaved so tightly together and it's and it's even. Uh, if it, it, I hope that that makes sense. All right, if not, you can ask me about it um, afterwards. And okay, so I spoke a little bit about like the wool blend. So again, right, this is a, a wool uh, merino super 120s, like little stretch to it. Then you have the wool cashmere, which uh, my coats are made out of. Um, and then, you know, this the cashmere, right? Um, but all of these things work together with the super number that give you the actual what the material is going to look and and feel like. If it, you know, if, if that makes sense. Let's see. Just a long Uh, question about the cuff link with how big do you tell a tailor to make your cuff in order to wear your watch? Arrington Kane, send me a DM. And I think I have something that can can show show you it. Um, so yes, so that was a lot. Okay, so what else do I have up here? So this was my first custom made tuxedo look at this lining though listen you couldn't tell me i wasn't lit okay the first time i wore wore this tuxedo but i modeled it and the beauty about bespoke is that you can make it be whatever you want right so i modeled this after a eve saint laurent uh tuxedo that i saw and it is just beautiful it is actually full canvas so it still it, it, it fits me beautifully still for my, my IG people. Look at that lining. Look at that. Look at that. Um, so I still feel amazing when when I put that, the, this tuxedo on and it just lays on my body and it just it just is, is, is right. Um, this is a window pane. All right, again, the quality of this material is just, it's just so beautiful. I wish you could feel it through the screen, but like I said, if you ever see me and, and I have it on, make sure you feel it. This is a double-breasted cotton suit, right? So this is spring, summer. You would not wear this in the winter. This is spring, summer. This is actually from J. Crew, um, and I'm not a big fan of cotton suits, because one, they wrinkle very fast, and they're like, in this, they they they're like stiff. Uh, they're stiffer. So I, I kind of, I do have cotton suits, of course, right for the spring and the summer, um, but it's not my favorite uh, suit to wear because I like for everything to lay nicely and not be wrinkled. <laughs> and I find that linen and, and cotton, you definitely going to get wrinkles um, with it. And then the last suit that I'll show you is a chambray. So again, this is a, a spring summer suit. It's from J. Crew. I've had it altered to my body. So it looks very nice on me um, when I wear it during that time. And of course, you would put it with spring and summer colors and in uh it the suit will really really uh will pop okay okay um suit tip dry cleaning dry cleaning the suits dry cleaning the suits i get this question 
often dry clean the suit twice a year twice a year twice a year okay the other time you should be steaming the suit you shouldn't be wearing your suit anywhere any anyway where you getting it all dirty and crazy um but if that happens of course you have to dry clean it but dry cleaning deteriorates the materials uh, so if you want to keep your suit for a very, very long time, many, many years, I've had this suit since 2008. So <laughs> it, what is this, 2019, so 11 years, and look at it. I mean, you can't really see it from, from the, but it's still beautiful. Dry clean twice a year, twice a year. The other time, steam that sucker, steam the suit, steam the suit. Um, what else? Don't put things in your pockets. Don't put things in your pockets. Not even your, not even your wallet, right? Putting things in your pocket, keys into your suit pocket, uh, fat wallet. It will change the shape of your suit, and your suit won't look good over time. When I wear a suit, right, I try to make sure that you know I have some other way to hold the items that I have. Or, right, it's it's like, you know, money and, and ID and debit card with, with a money clip or something. Something that's not going to be fat and busting out of your pockets. Keys, the keys could cut the inside, uh, you know, your pocket lining. And then next thing you know, you have a hole inside your, your, your suit pocket. No keys, no sharp objects. Try to put as least as possible in your suit uh pockets um i try to yeah I, I try to put as least possible um in in my pocket how do you decide which fabrics to wear for the season so cottons linens of course those are spring summer chambray that's spring summer a tweed is definitely for winter um a lot of wool suits are year round so if you could find a year round suit that would be ideal, right? Because then you can wear it um, at uh, year round. Um, if, if if that makes sense. So let's see what else. Yes. So that was a lot. Was it good? Type type of yes. Type of yes. Type of yes. Type of no. If you didn't think that this was was helpful, I know I got a lot of my fashion guys on here. So I see your comments. I see you chiming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, again, these are things that I've learned over time. Um, I've been doing this for quite some time and I absolutely love men's clothes and in, in particular men's dapper clothes. So suits and shoes and all of those things. Um, so get ready for my suit line right that is coming that it is coming it is coming it's coming ideally what i'm what i'm planning is just a few right too many options people get confused a confused mind says no right so if you confuse people when you selling them stuff they will not buy right so a confused mind says no so i want to make sure that i give people a few options that make sense right a navy suit a charcoal gray suit, right? A double-breasted pinstripe maybe in a tuxedo, and that is the line. That is the line. If you want a custom suit, something with all it, you know, all these checks and this and that and the other, come see me. Come see me personally. But in terms of what the wealthy suit collection will look like, it will be simple. Sometimes simple is best, right? You build around that simple with your tie and with your shirt and with your pocket square. So keeping it very, very simple. Um, so how often dry cleaning suits? Two times a year. Do you dye your beard? Yes, I dye my beard. It is actually due for a bleaching um, soon. Um, so that is it. So I've actually gone 15 minutes over the time that I expected to go, but I think it was a good conversation. I hope that you know you found some value in it. Um, thank you for all of you know the likes and the comments and everything on my IG has been going crazy. Um, my goal is to hit 10k. 
uh, pretty soon, pretty soon, pretty soon. My goal is to hit 10K, so help me get there. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, the coats have been selling. My fur hats have been selling. Uh, people have just been really, really showing me love. And a lot of people also send me DMs, um, and, so, and I try my best to answer them when I can, especially if you're looking for style advice. Uh, but also just know if you want some real, real one-on-one -on -one attention, I do offer a style enhancement service. Um, so, you, you know, the free is you continue to watch me on lives and follow my posts and things like that. Or if you want more individualized attention to enhance your style, then you can hire me for my style enhancement um, service. So thank you. 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 Listen, like it is so hard doing your own thing, running your own business and having people give you money for what you're good at. And I have just been so fortunate that I've had so many people support me and encourage me along the way. And we all need that. We all need that. All of you guys need that. I need it, right? Because I have so I live with self doubt and all of those things, just like everybody else. A lot of times, people are like, "Oh, you look like you have it all together." I don't. I'm just trying to make it just like everyone else. Um, so I appreciate all of the love, all of the support, uh, all of the clients, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you for following.